So in this video we're going to uh, demonstrate how to do another direct proof, this one involving inequalities. And here's the one that we're going to do. For all positive real numbers a and b, if a is less than b, then a squared is less than b squared. So the first thing I always like to do is write the thing out in symbols. So why don't you put the video on pause and um, see if you can write that out in symbols. And after you do that, see if you can tell me what the first two sentences of the proof uh, should be. So here it is written in symbols. For all real numbers a and b, if a is positive and b is positive and a is less than b, then a squared is less than b squared. So you'll notice that the um, the universal set is the real numbers, and the hypothesis doesn't just consist of a less than b, but also the fact that both a and b are positive. So that's why all of this appears in the hypothesis. The very first sentence of the proof should be, uh, let a and b be real. The second sentence should be, suppose a and b are both positive and a is less than b. And the very last sentence should be something like, therefore a squared is less than b squared. Before we talk about how to prove this um, proposition, let's note down some of the basic tools we can use when dealing with inequalities. So these are the properties you should be aware of. They each begin with the inequality a less than b. And uh, the first three of them say what happens to that inequality when various arithmetic operations are performed on it. The first one says that if you add a real number c to both sides of the inequality, that the inequality is preserved, regardless of what that c is. The second, in, uh, second uh, property says that if you multiply both sides of the inequality by a constant c, then the inequality is preserved, provided the constant is positive. And the third one says the inequality is reversed if that constant is negative. The fourth property is referred to as transitivity, and it says that if we have a string of inequalities, a less than b and b less than c, so you'll notice that b is common to both, and they're both going in the same way, they're both less than, then you can cl conclude that a is less than c. Okay, so these are fairly obvious properties. Okay, let's see if we can come up with the proof of this result. Uh, but unlike in um, previous videos, I'm not going to do it by writing down a proof table, but instead I'm just going to do some rough calculations to see if they lead me to the idea of the proof, something that I can build into a correct proof. So remember what it is we're trying to do. We've got um, two positive numbers, so um, two positive numbers and uh, one less than the other, and we want to deduce from that, sorry for my writing, but it says 0 less than a less than b, and we want to deduce from that that a squared is less than b squared. Okay, so let's try starting from this inequality a less than b, and what we need to do is we, ha we have to somehow get an a squared and a b squared in the picture. So how can I get an a squared and a b squared in the picture starting with this? Well, that's not so clear. Uh, using properties that we that we know, but we we can get an a squared in the picture at least by multiplying both sides by a. So remember we proved, uh, or, or rather we wrote down this property that if you have an inequality and you multiply both sides by a positive number, then it's preserved. So let's multiply by the positive number a, and that's going to give us a squared less than a times b. Okay. Now, suppose this time instead we want to get b squared in the picture. Well, a similar trick would be instead of multiplying both sides by a, we're going to multiply by b, and that's going to give us something very similar. It's going to give us ab is less than b squared. Now, uh, look at the two results that we've got. They're both inequalities and they have this common linking term, 
and they're both going in the same direction. So that means we can apply transitivity uh, and deduce that a squared is less than b squared. And that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so that's the idea of the proof, and you'll notice that actually we started from things that we know, and we proceeded using properties that we know to be true to get to the final answer. And so <clears throat> we're very close to having a, a, uh, the real proof here because everything proceeds exactly in the order that we came up with it. All of the things we've written down here are things that we know. They're not things that we're trying to get to. So let's now try to write this up in a proper proof. So actually it might be a good idea for you to put your video on hold and uh, have a look at these properties here and uh, see if you can use those to write up a proper proof and then uh, when you come back we can compare our proofs. Okay, well here's the proof that I came up with based on the calculations we did. Let's see how your proof compares with mine. Okay, so we know that we have to begin in the same way. Let A and B be real numbers. And next we assume the hypothesis. So we say, suppose that A and B are both positive and that A is less than B. Now the reason that I put it in this display here and I numbered it is that I decided that it was a good idea to be able to refer back to it later. So putting it in a display makes it easier to find, to read, and numbering it um, and allows me to reference it later on in the proof. Um, now, since A and B are both positive, we obtain the following two inequalities by multiplying inequality 1 on both sides, first by A and then by B. And so that gives a squared less than AB and AB less than B squared. As you can see, I wanted to refer back to that string of inequalities later on, and so I put it in a display and I numbered it. It follows from 2 and the transitivity property of inequalities that A squared is smaller than B squared. So you see that overall I've tried to follow the standard format for writing a direct proof. I began by assuming the hypotheses here in the second sentence and I ended by showing that I had deduced that the um, conclusion is true. And along the way I used grammatically correct English sentences, complete English sentences, and everything that I wrote in the proof, everything is a, something that I know to be true, not something that I'm trying to prove. So these are all things that, regardless of what style you use to write your proof, um, you should do um, all of those things as well. Now our textbook actually has a different way of doing it, and I'd like to go over that way as well, because it brings up an interesting point, as you'll see. So um, once again, I'm going to discuss that method by looking at some, uh, doing some calculations on scrap paper. So once again, we're we're starting off with this inequality and we want to deduce that a squared is less than b squared. So now let, let's this time start with a squared less than b squared. And of course that's the same as saying that b squared minus a squared is positive. And now when you look at b squared minus a squared, if you're a mathematician, you really shouldn't be able to look at that without thinking of the difference of two squares formula. And so rewriting it as um, b minus a times b plus a. And now you see you've got a product of two things. And the assumption is that the b minus a is positive, right? Because a is smaller than b. And b plus a is also positive because a and b are both positive. So now you've got a product of two positive numbers, and so of course we know that that has to be positive. And so um, these steps are probably all reversible, and so that probably allows you to conclude this. And so that's a, that's a basis for a proof. But what's different about this 
um, way of looking at things from the previous one is that the proof doesn't proceed from here on down because this isn't something that we know to be true. This is exactly what it is we're trying to prove. And so you can't start your proof by having a squared less than b squared because that's exactly what you want to prove. You can pretty much start your proof by, um, you know, um, a smaller than b, which implies b minus a is positive, and also a and b are both positive, so that implies b plus a is positive. Now that you've got those, you can then deduce this one because you got a product of two positives, and that's certainly positive. And once you have that, well then you can go here, and that then allows you to go there. So in other words, the style that I wrote down here, the calculations were exactly the reverse order of the way it should look in the proof. So the proof will actually proceed sort of like this, upwards. Um, so now let's use this um, to help us to write a second proof of the result. So once again, why don't you put your video on hold and make use of these things and see if you can write down a proof. And when you come back, you can compare uh, your proof to the one that I'm going to write. See you soon. Okay, so here's the final version of my proof. Let A and B be real numbers. Suppose that A and B are both positive and that A is less than B. It follows that. And then I give this display, which I label. It follows that B minus A and B plus A are both positive. That's the first, uh, the first one follows from here. And the second from the fact that the sum of two positives is positive. Since the product of two positive real numbers is positive, it follows from one that the product of these two numbers is positive. Uh, but that's another way of writing b squared minus a squared. So b squared minus a squared is positive. If you add a squared to both sides of that, you get that um, a squared is less than b squared. And that completes the proof. So you see, I've written things down in exactly the opposite order to what we uh, found in our calculations. And writing it in this way, you'll see that everything I wrote is something that I know to be true, not something that I'm trying to prove is true.